Hey everyone, welcome to Vet Visit. I'm Hansika Singh and I'm a veterinary student. This video is aimed to give you an idea about ticks, tick fever, its symptoms, diagnosis, treatment and prevention in dogs. So let's get started. So first of all, what are ticks? Many of you must be knowing that ticks are the ectoparasites found over the dog's body, chiefly on under the collar, the genital areas, near the eyelids, inside or outside the ears, between the toes, near the anus, under the tail, armpit region. Ticks do not jump or fly, rather they just crawl and attach themselves to the body of the animal. The most common type of ticks found in India are brown dog tick and deer tick. Deer tick is also known as black leg tick. If we talk about the season where ticks can be really problematic in dogs, can be between the months of say April to September. Why? Because there is a lot of humidity, moisture and water in the season, which is a very conducive environment for the ticks to grow. There are overgrown grasses in the season and ticks, they travel up to the tips of the plants and shrubs and wait them. And whenever the plant is brushed by an animal, they quickly climb up to the host, a process known as questing. Now having said that, it does not mean that ticks cannot be found in the other remaining months of the year. Ticks can even be found in the month of January or February where there is a uh, very cold environment but it's just that they do not have that easy access to the uh, host as they have in this season now let's come to tick fever to understand tick fever we must know that ticks basically act as a vehicle or a vector for a number of diseases commonly canine ehrlichiosis which is caused by a rickettsial organism canine babesiosis which is caused by a protozoal organism canine anaplasmosis, Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever which are caused by bacterial organism and less commonly canine hepatozoonosis and canine botanulosis. So we can say that the fever caused in all these conditions due to ticks can be simply known as tick fever. Ticks mainly affect the cells of the body of the animal, mainly platelets go down, uh, some affect RBC, WBC and tick fever is an immunosuppressive disease. Now, it is important to understand that there is a difference between having ticks on the body and having tick fever. Just because an animal is covered with ticks does not necessarily mean that that dog will have tick fever. It is the bite of an infected tick which will cause tick fever. So suppose a tick is traveling from one healthy dog to another healthy dog, it will not cause tick fever and a tick which has taken infected meal from an infected dog and then it transfers to a healthy dog then it will cause tick fever so that means a dog covered with hundreds and thousands of ticks may not get tick fever if that infected tick is absent whereas on the other hand a dog having just one or two tick but the infected tick will cause him tick fever so even a single infected tick is sufficient to cause tick fever. Now why I am telling this is because sometimes owner comes and he or she might say that no my dog just does not have many ticks on the body so how can my dog get tick fever. So it is due to this reason. Now let's come to the symptoms of a dog having tick fever. The symptoms vary a lot from one dog to another but commonly the symptoms are high fever the temperature would be above 104 degree Fahrenheit but uh, say on the day 4th or 5th day as the hemoglobin goes down the temperature will also fall. Uh, the other symptoms can be epistaxis which is bleeding from nose, uh, blood in the urine, vomitions, diarrhea, pain in the hind legs, dullness, lethargy and red spots can be found on the lower abdomen due to decrease in the platelets. Now there is no classical picture of a dog having tick fever. A dog may just have one or two symptoms uh, in case of tick fever and the other dog may have all the symptoms. So we cannot say that uh, these all, all these symptoms have to be necessarily present in case of tick fever in a dog. Coming to the diagnosis of tick fever in dogs. 
The laboratory diagnosis is mainly based upon CBC in which we will find low platelet counts which is known as thrombocytopenia. So, uh, low platelet counts correlated with cl uh, the clinical signs can be an indicative of tick fever. But coming to the confirmatory test, it is PCR which is polymerase chain reaction. Now, uh, the, some problems with PCR test is that the availability of this test is not in every lab, especially in rural or semi-urban areas. Uh, second, this test is little bit on the expensive side, it's around 2500 and it is a little kind time consuming. So the report it usually comes after 48 hours. Coming to the third test which is not so reliable, it is a slight test. So in that we take a drop of blood and we examine for the parasite under the microscope. But why it is not reliable because since we are doing it manually. So we, there are chances that we might miss the parasite and second since we are taking just a drop of blood so not always that parasite has to come in that particular drop of blood when we would under the microscope. Coming to the treatment of tick fever. Now the treatment of tick fever in dogs is usually long. We cannot expect a dog to get well within 5 or 7 days especially in severe cases. It usually goes up to 21 or 28 days where suitable antiprotozoal drugs, antimicrobial drugs are given um, and also symptomatic treatment can be given and in case of severe cases even blood transfusion or hospitalization is required. Now let's come to a very important aspect of prevention of ticks on dogs because in some cases the uh, treatment of ticks and getting rid of ticks is really really difficult so it is very rightly said that prevention is always better than cure but before i come to the anti-tick commercial products available in the market some advices which can be given to the pet owners are regular hygiene and grooming of the pet now by grooming i do not mean that frequent bathing has to be done Grooming means simple brushing and massaging. In case of long breed dogs, the brushing has to be done at least once a day. Another thing which is also uh, encouraged is playing with a dog. So the idea is when you play with a dog daily, you have to uh, touch him almost everywhere on his body so that even when even there is a small or a minute foreign object or an unusual object which you notice, that can be detected timely and the appropriate prevention and precautions can be taken before it turns out something very huge and uh, before it is too late. But coming to some natural preventive measures for ticks can be neem oil and apple cider vinegar with equal quantities of water. Now why ticks are so problematic is because we not only have to eliminate them from the body of the animal but also from the environment which is quite a difficult task. Uh, why? Because when their meal is completed, they detach themselves from the body of the animal and it will enter into some furniture, crevices and it will lay thousands of eggs. And those eggs when uh, their life cycle is completed, they again come onto the uh, body of the animal and the cycle goes on. So it is very important, very imperative to remove, to eliminate the ticks not only from the body of the animal but also from the environment. To eliminate ticks present on the body of the animal, there are a lot of anti-tick products available in the market. But when we have to take care about the ticks present in the environment, pest control is really important. That is mainly done by different methods but fumigation is very common and it is quite effective because the fumes will get inside and even uh, in those areas where practically you cannot spray any anti-tick solution. So now coming to some of the commercially available anti-tick products. First is anti-tick shampoo or anti-tick uh, soaps but they only remove or eliminate the ticks present at that time on the body of the animal and just one bath won't eliminate all the ticks. It has to be uh, at least two or three subsequent baths which will help in eliminating the ticks. Next coming to anti-tick collars. So what are these anti-tick collars? Basically just a collar having medicine or drug inside it and they are a minute pores and those pores release that drug over the body of the animal. Some care which has to be taken with these anti-tick collars is that 
uh, first of all when it is tied around the neck of the animal it should be tight enough so that it touches the skin of the animal and only then it is effective uh, over the time it might get loose so we have to take care that we should tighten that up secondly um, over the time the pores might also get closed so like around two months or three months we have to properly scrape uh, from the inside of the collar so that those pores are again open third we have to take care that the collar should not be dampened and uh, while bathing the animal of course we have to remove the collar third we have injectables and fourth we have spot ons so spot ons are given as per the weight category of the animal suppose the weight of your dog is 25 kgs so uh, the spot on between 20 to 30 kgs that can be given to your to the dog uh, the spot ons are applied on the neck area usually of the animal touching the skin and the animal should not be bathed for up to 7 to 10 days after its application. Next we have anti tick sprays and these sprays are quite effective against all the stages of ticks on the body of the animal. So these sprays have to be applied uh, putting the hair, pulling the hair aside and against the direction of the hair. Now there is a problem with this spray with regards to owners. What is that problem? That the owners do not use the appropriate amount of sprays on their dog's body. So the appropriate uh, sprays are around 3 to 6 sprays per kg of dog. So suppose your dog is weighing 10 kgs, it has to be given like 30 to 60 sprays. The animal should be drenched in sprays and not use it like deodorant like just one or two sprays because otherwise it won't be effective we have anti tick powders these powders are sprinkled over the dog's body but the only problem is that the dog might lick it so next we have the oral medicines so a new uh, quite new medicine is introduced into the market and that one tablet is sufficient quite effective for a period up to three months against ticks so that's it for today's video in this video we discussed briefly about ticks tick fever its symptoms uh, diagnosis treatment and prevention prevention probably the most important one so yes if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to wet visit then yes please do while subscribing do hit the bell icon so that you're always notified whenever a new video comes up if you haven't followed the instagram and Facebook page of Ed Visit, then please follow that as well. I'll see you next time. Till then, take care of yourselves and keep loving animals like you always do.